I am Jeffrey Kluger, author of Apollo 8 and editor-at-large at Time Magazine. I'm John Sterling, the editor of Apollo 8. Frank Borman, commander of this mission, um, carried, I think, a special burden um, with the launch of Apollo 8. In fact, really before the launch of Apollo 8. And, and it takes us back to the story of the tragedy of Apollo 1. Um, talk a little bit about Frank Borman and that burden he carried. Frank Borman was uniquely close to one of the three astronauts who died in the Apollo 1 fire. They were Gus Grissom, a space veteran, Ed White, another space veteran, the first, man to, first American to walk in space, and uh, uh, Roger Chaffee, a man who hadn't flown yet. Borman did not give his friendship easily or terribly openly, but he did to Ed White. They became the very best and very closest of friends. The two families lived across the street from one another, and he and Ed had a lot of time together, fishing, talking, and bonding in ways that Frank didn't typically. To the extent that Frank Borman, who is a deeply practical man, could have his heart absolutely shattered. I think it was the death of Ed White that did that to him. And yet, given his enormous organizational skills and his inexhaustible mind, he was named as the astronaut liaison to the North American Aviation Plant in Downey, California, where the spacecraft was being rebuilt. So Borman had lost a friend to the tragedy, and all of the other friends who would fly in a future mission were in some ways dependent on his getting this job right. He did get it right, and he got it so wonderfully right, and his organizational skills were so unmistakably in evidence that before he ever got a chance to train for Apollo 8, he was offered the opportunity to leave the astronaut corps altogether and go into NASA management and help manage the, the Apollo space program. He wanted no part of that. He was a pilot. He signed up to fly. So he got the Apollo 8 mission. And he was pleased to get the Apollo 8 mission, but he tried to bring to it only an engineer's frame of mind. To him, yes, this is a history-making mission, but it's a Cold War mission. It's an engineering mission. And for that reason, there's going to be no messing around. There will be absolutely no improvisational maneuvers on this mission. There will be absolutely nothing that's not in the flight plan. We are going to fly a minimalist mission. We're going to get out and do what we need to do and come back. And in so doing, win a battle in the space, in the space race and move us closer to landing on the moon. Um, the story that so nicely and graspably captures, I think, Frank's attitude was on Christmas Eve when these guys opened their Christmas dinner and they were used to just indescribably awful dehydrated space food that you would rehydrate with hot water and you'd get gooey pieces and dry pieces and they just thought it's all nutrition, just get it in so we don't die. Um, they actually got a wonderful, by space standards, turkey dinner and each of them got a miniature of brandy that little gift wrap things. Now these were pilots, they knew how to drink. Yes, they hadn't had any alcohol in a couple of days, but they could certainly do a shot of brandy. And Borman looked at them and said, for God's sake, don't open those things. <laughs> if anything goes wrong on the flight back, they will blame it on a drunken crew. So he was very, very serious about this. That was the attitude Frank brought into this mission. When I was working on the book a couple of summers ago, I asked Frank a question he's been asked a thousand times, which is, do you ever look at the moon at night and say, I can't believe I've been there? And he said, I have mostly because people tell me that's how I should feel, so I give it a try. And he said, I guess I feel it. He said, but you know what? The moon didn't impress me. The earth, that impressed me. This is who he is. And the other story that I think that captures best Frank Borman is a year later when I was editing the book and I called him at his airplane hangar in Billings, Montana to ask him a question. And the 88-year-old Frank Borman said, oh, I'm glad you caught me when I did because an hour ago 
I was up flying a smoke spotting mission around Billings because it's fire season, so I like to help out and keep an eye out for people. This is how heroes roll. 88, you got a free morning. Go look out for your neighbors. <laughs>